more recently, I've been developing the Blender BIM add-on, which is an add-on which gives uh, BIM capabilities to Blender. What do you mean by uh, BIM cap capabilities? BIM, in this case, is very specific. It refers to open BIM. So um, it's Blender, as you know, is a 3D modeling package, so it can already do a 3D geometry. And uh, if you want to add data to that, you can already add metadata to it. Um, it's, there's, you can add keys and values just like uh, most other uh, 3D software. Um, but that doesn't necessarily uh, make it useful for uh, the AEC industry. And so what I try to do is to implement the Open BIM standards. So uh, the most famous of which is IFC, uh, which is created by Building Smart. And it's an excellent initiative to uh, encourage vendors to allow data interoperability between their programs. And IFC is an ISO standard uh, and has been for a very long time. So that is what we're bringing to uh, Blender, is the ability to save the geometry and the data in accordance to the IFC ISO standards. Um, IFC is not the only standard that Blender BIM uh, implements. Uh, another one would be the BCF standard, and there are a series of utilities around interrogating it, such as clash detection and um, issue management and so on, that are also built. I see. Uh, but uh, let's try to make it a little bit more clearer for those who don't know too much about Blender or who did not use it so much, right? So Blender is mainly a 3D modeling software, right? Which is open source. But it's, uh, uh, it's not very used in, uh, for engineering, right? It's based on meshes. You model using meshes, right? So how do we make that usable for our industry? Or do we only import an IFC file and we can uh, uh, add or edit some properties there? Or do we have the possibility to start modeling in Blender? Yeah, so uh, as you say, Blender uh, was designed for the CG industry, not for the construction, engineering, architecture industry. And as a result, uh, the way they model is using meshes. Um, and most of the other software that we're used to don't use uh, meshes very much. They use a lot of parametric objects. And although you can achieve the same thing in Blender, uh, that is not the primary focus of the application. And as a result, there's a bit of a mismatch when Blender is used for, uh, let's say, CAD-style geometry. But I think one thing to realize is that there's, uh, meshes are actually uh, quite flexible and, and quite uh, useful for many use cases. So uh, the most obvious one is architectural visualization. There are already many ArcViz artists who are using Blender for that purposes, and meshes do a very good job because of the ability to uh, record UV coordinates for texturing. But it's less useful for certain other disciplines. And that's not to say it's not possible. It just means that you need to think slightly differently when you're using it as an application. It is possible to model an entire building very quickly uh, with meshes. Uh, if you're just acting as an architect and there's not much that you'd lose. Um, and there are a couple of details you need to consider, like how arcs and circles are tessellated, um, but that's not insurmountable. Uh, after all, it's just a couple more parameters you need to store, like a, a center point and a radius. Uh, and um, once you start giving people the interfaces to store those parameters, at the end of the day, if you zoom into it and it's slightly tessellated, it, it doesn't really matter as long as the data is calculated correctly. A bit like how in an old style AutoCAD, if you zoom in, depending yeah. on your view scale, you would see it to be faceted, but you know that all the calculations are still going to be correct. 
So um, there have been quite a few initiatives. One example is Archipack. Archipack lets you parametrically create uh, geometry in Blender uh, that's related to the architecture domain, and that would preserve the uh, parametric uh, and the, uh, the solids uh, uh, representation. Uh, another example is in Blender BIM itself. So Blender BIM preserves uh, parametric rectangles coming in and out of other software and you can set extrusion profiles. So it's actually possible using Blender BIM to round trip um, a geometry between, our pro uh, between Blender, which is supposedly just a mesh package, and other programs like Revit or ArchiCAD, and, fully, and they're fully modifiable. You can uh, move up and down the profile extrusions, modify the profiles and so on, as if it were a native object. And as you can see, it is possible. Uh, all you need is to uh, change the workflow slightly. There's also yeah. an initiative to uh, mix Blender and FreeCAD using SphereJock, which is the uh, sort of graphical node base equivalent of Grasshopper or Dynamo in Blender, which let, lets you uh, manipulate a FreeCAD style geometry, which is the type of CAD geometry which you're more used to. Yeah, but uh, what does uh, Sverchok has to do with FreeCAD? Uh, do they have anything in common or do, do they work with each other? It's based on uh, FreeCAD, Sverchok? No, Sverchok is based on Blender. Yeah, there it's are another. some additional, correct, but there are some nodes in Sverchok which allow it to integrate with FreeCAD's geometry. Oh, So you okay. can effectively transfer geometry to and fro. Okay, now I understand. Uh, so, uh, okay, what is FreeCAD? Well, uh, FreeCAD is an amazing uh, uh, well, free CAD package. <laughs> it's, um, it's a, it does a little bit of different type of geometry modeling. Um, it's almost the opposite of Blender. So Blender is mesh-based and extremely free-form, uh, artistic, very rapid-style modeling uh, that CG artists are, are, are very happy with. Uh, FreeCAD is the opposite. It's all about uh, parametric. It's all about constraints. It's about a hierarchy, um, a tree of objects which depend on one another. So um, you might have uh, heard of CATIA. That, that style modeling is, is more what FreeCAD promises. And that's very good and very appropriate for certain types of objects. Uh, but I would argue that for other types of objects, uh, it, it's less appropriate. So it's used mostly by mechanical engineers or product designers, but it's possible to use it also for uh, civil engineers, right? Or uh, for structural engineers. It's possible to make buildings in it, right? You have an uh, add-on or something. They have some, I don't remember, workbench, I think they call themselves, right? There are some workbenches that you uh, uh, facilitate you to, to, to do different things that it cannot do natively, right? Yes. So uh, FreeCAD has a core, uh, a core application, which is then extended by a series of what they call workbenches. And each workbench specializes in a particular domain. So one workbench will add capabilities specific to architectural modeling. Another workbench will add capabilities specific to structural simulation or uh, parametric sketching, or uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot out there. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not the best person to speak to about that. Um, you might want to speak to Yorick, uh, one of the main developers. 